Hey guys, Stealth here. Today I'm going over the five crucial skills that you need to have in order to get a good wargame experience. Or at least, these are the five that I find the most relevant. Number one, spot and recognize. And I'm not only talking units. For example, look at the map. The map is the first thing that you should learn to recognize. And I'm not talking, oh, this is this map, oh, I need to do this and this and that. No, learn to read the map. What can you see from the terrain? If I see, for example, a tree line like this, overlooking a forest or overlooking a town, I'm thinking, okay, I got a tree line here. With this tree line, if I park infantry in here, short range infantry, they're not gonna do anything. If I park a tank in here, it's gonna be able to fire, let's say up to this line, all the way over there. If I park an ATGM trooper in there, would that work? Well, maybe, but the enemy vehicles are coming down this road, which means that all the buildings are going to be in the way. So from this position, an anti-tank guided missile is not likely to hit. However, if you take, for example, an AA gun and you park it here, what's that going to do? Well, that's going to try and take care of any kind of aerial threat that it can spot and hit from this position. So, a tank, HGM units to some extent, and AA units would be a good position to have here. Reconnaissance infantry, not so much, because recon is something that you need up front. If it's all the way in the back, you're not likely to spot anything. Similarly, let's say I'm over on the right flank, and I'm looking at this position. Right here would be a terrible position for a tank. Because a tank can very easily get flanked, can very easily get side shots, and that is very, very bad for the health of your tank. An AA gun is similarly in trouble. Because an AA gun is very, very likely to get stuck behind a building, not have the line of sight that it needs, and end up not being able to hit the target. Short range infantry and AA infantry would be really useful in these building blocks. Because AA infantry, if it's in this building, it's just going to be able to look up, scan 360 perimeter or 360 degree perimeter, and pretty much determine whatever threat there is and engage it. Short range infantry, good option. Long range anti GM infantry, not so much. If you have an anti tank guided missile infantry unit over here in this building, it's not going to do anything. You won't be able to shoot this way, you won't be able to shoot that way, you won't be able to shoot that way. Because all the buildings are going to be in the way, and they need a constant line of sight to their target. If you have your infantry in here and you want to block off this site, that is the only thing that they can hit. So parking your ATGM infantry in this building block is going to be way more efficient. It's going to be able to detect and engage, or let's say at least engage, detecting not so much, it doesn't have great optics. It's going to be able to engage anything in this perimeter. And that makes it so that long range anti-tank infantry is good here. Short range anti-tank infantry, and I'm talking 525 to 700, maybe even 900 meters. Not so much, because those vehicles are going to stick to the road and try to get up there, meaning they're out of range. So the first skill, spot and recognize. And I'm not only talking about the map, we're also talking about units here. Now, getting that skill done is um, going to be happening in steps if you're new to Wargame. For example, if you look at this unit, you can easily see it's a helicopter. You don't know exactly what kind of helicopter it is if you've never seen it before. What you can see from it is that it carries these large obstacles or large things on its side pods. Those are rocket pods. If you don't see those, a helicopter does not have rocket pods and is not likely to be able to fire rockets at you. Similarly, if you see a several uh, racks of missiles, you are more likely to start getting missile fire from that target. The other part of being able to spot and recognize the map is being able to park your spotters accordingly. Now, a spotter means any kind of unit that has recon. So it's a unit from your recon tab. It can be an infantry unit, it can be a vehicle, it can be a helicopter. I don't care what kind of unit it is. So long as it has medium optics or better, I call it a spotter. And a spotter, um, there's an entirely separate video on reconnaissance. So I'm going to be linking to that right here on the screen. Click on it if you need that kind of instruction. 
But being able to spot whatever is coming at you is going to allow you to do the second skill, which is countering. Countering means being able to have the right opportunity or the right unit in the right spot at the right time to kill off the threat that is coming at you. Let's have a look at the units that I'm putting up here. If it was just this tank, it's just this challenger here, that's the problem. What's the best way to kill a tank? I can try going at it with um, another tank, which if the other tank that I'm using has enough firepower, I might be able to kill it. It will, however, take fire. If you have infantry, well, let's say short-range infantry, line infantry, or shock troopers which don't have long-range anti-tank capability, then they're going to have to close to within their firing distance. They're going to start walking towards the tank. The tank is not just going to casually sit there and will return fire. So what you need to be able to do is have something else. A long-range anti-tank weapon could be an interesting alternative. And you have those on several vehicles. You have those on airplanes. The question though is, is this area currently safe to engage? For an airplane, maybe. I only have a Challenger Marksman here, but let's just ignore that. If it was only this Challenger, sending in an anti-tank plane would be a good idea, because the tank cannot return fire at it. Having an anti-tank guided missile on infantry, and the infantry for example would be over there, would be a pretty decent alternative, because the anti-tank guided missile usually has a better range than the tank itself. Some units are exceptional, but most of them don't have the ability, or most tanks don't have the ability to shoot back before the ATGM missile has fired. If I was having my ATGM infantry in this building though, it would be bad. Because the tank would just look around, spot my infantry the moment it fired, and instantly return fire. So in this situation, and this is coming back to my first skill, spotting, the first skill means that spotting this opportunity for an anti-tank guided missile launcher would not be the best. This is where line infantry would be better, because I can right now get a side shot on this tank, but even if I cannot get a side shot, I will at least start panicking this vehicle, meaning it's going to be an easier kill. Now countering is something that you're going to have to be able to do all the time. Make sure you know what is coming at you, so spot it, and then try to figure out what the most likely counter would be. That's, for example, why you see my units here moving in a small column. And I have this column here intentionally. I have a tank, and my tank can engage pretty much whatever I need it to engage, provided it's not flying. If there is going to be a flying unit, so it could be a helicopter, it could be an airplane, I want it to start taking damage, and that is why I have my Challenger Marksman. This is an AA gun. It's not going to be great against tanks, at least not from afar. Even up close, it's not likely to kill a tank because it doesn't have any armor penetration. So that's why this combination is what you could say um, a counter combo. The tank can clear out anything on the ground, provided it stays at range without having been engaged by other targets. And he makes sure that this AA unit does not take any cover or does not take any fire from either infantry, other vehicles or other tanks. The AA gun is there to make sure his buddy, the tank, cannot get hit by aircraft. Or at least is going to deter enemy aircraft from firing. So making sure that you have these two together or any similar combination will make sure that you have a decent chance of keeping both units alive. Because if I were to have just my tank here, one helicopter with an anti-tank guided missile would be enough to kill my Challenger. If I'd have just one Challenger Marksman, so one AA gun, I would only need to come in with a tank and kill the Challenger Marksman. It would just be that easy. Now, coming back to first skill, spotting. What do you see here? What I see here right now is one recon helicopter. If you're not familiar with it, you can see that it has the binoculars in its icon, which means it's a recon unit. This thing is there to spot. If I wouldn't even look at the unit stats, I can still zoom in. I can see that it has a machine gun on its nose, or a Gatling cannon. 
And it has a lot of rocket tubes mounted under its wings. So this helicopter is very likely to engage me with rocket pods. Now rocket pods are a big problem to lightly armored vehicles. Will this thing kill my Challenger main battle tank? Probably not. Unless I get really unlucky. How about the other units? I'm seeing a couple of KA-29 TBs. And again, you can see that these things have rocket pods. They don't seem to have a machine gun, or at least I can't see it. But they still have one of those. That is the GSHG-762 that you can see in the unit stats. I can also see that they're carrying infantry. Right now, of course, if I switch to my own view, I might not be able to see all of that. I don't know if they have infantry. But logically, and that's coming back to the first skill, spotting, it would not make sense to offload your infantry there. You want to capture this building as quickly as possible, because infantry works best inside a building where it has cover. I can also see another helicopter coming in. This helicopter seems to be armed with rocket pods. You can see the rocket pod launcher there. You can also see that it's firing a missile, which means that this thing has either anti-air missiles or anti-tank missiles. I don't have any ground units, so it cannot fire an anti-tank missile. What it can do is fire an anti-air missile, and that's exactly what it's doing. My helicopter here is starting to take fire from the missile that just came out of the pod from this MI-24. So I now know that I have units capable of transporting infantry. I have a unit that's capable of spotting me. I have a unit that's capable of firing anti-air missiles or air-to-air -air missiles. And I have potentially more transports coming in. What I'm not seeing right now is any ground units. Which may mean that it's going to be easy for my tank to um, hold this position against other vehicles or against the infantry. However, if I wouldn't have that Challenger Marksman, and that's tying into the second skill, Counter, I would not be able to shoot down the helicopters, or at least not effectively. Because while my Challenger 1 Mark III does carry a machine gun, it is not likely to get a good number of hits onto those helicopters. And some of them it won't even be able to penetrate at all, like that MI-24K. Now, I'm going to skip the, or speed this up a bit. You can see that they have captured this terrain. Again, I'm constantly going through my skills. I'm going to spot and recognize, so units and terrain. I'm seeing what kind of cover they have available. They have buildings. They still have that helicopter. The helicopter is stunned, so it's taken some kind of damage. That's from my Challenger Marksman. I can see some units coming in here. They're apparently not flying, but they are starting to take fire, which means they are ground-based unit. You can see that this one has a very large radar dish. You don't use a radar dish to engage ground-based targets, so this must be an AA unit. The other one is clearly a tank, at least from its profile. Now you can see that my reconnaissance is not ideal here, because my recon unit was in the helicopter that they shot down, so I'm only relying on what my tanks, and my, or what my tank and my Challenger Marksman can see. Aside from that, I do know that there's a tank coming in. And I do know that I can kill the tank, because the tank has already taken quite a lot of damage. The tank is also firing, which means that it is in the capability of doing damage to either of my units. So it's going to be hitting either the Sultan, the Challenger Marksman, or the Challenger 1 Mark III. The Challenger Marksman is supposedly engaging helicopters, while the Challenger 1 Mark III is engaging ground-based vehicles. So again, spotting, recognizing, and countering. I'm countering the ground-based vehicles with my tank, and the air-based vehicles, or the let's say the helicopters, with my AA unit. And I'm keep constantly checking these troops. That's the third skill. Check your troops. I'm checking them for pretty much everything. What's their health? This one's full health. What is their ammo? This one has fired four rounds, and you can see that in the bottom below the main weapon, the L11A5. The Challenger Marksman has fired half of its ammunition, which means that I have to start planning ahead. I gotta start thinking about how I'm going to rearm this Challenger Marksman if it runs out of ammo, because this thing, considering that it just took down a couple of helicopters, it is rather likely to be able to start running out of ammo. Now again, spotting and recognizing infantry, briefly spotted and hopped into a building. 
My Challenger, Mark, Mark, Challenger 1 Mark 3 immediately engaged it to try and counter it. So skills 1 and 2. As that's going on, I'm checking what other units I can expect. And I'm trying to bring in multiple units immediately. So you can see an FV Warrior 90 coming in. This one is carrying infantry. I'm bringing this one in because it can counter the infantry with the auto cannon that this vehicle has. The infantry inside could be used to either recon the buildings that are here or to counter the infantry that's inside while being backed up by either the Challenger Marksman or the Challenger 1 Mark III and the auto cannon from the warrior itself. So constantly checking what do my forces need? How am I going to counter this? How am I going to make sure that I got all the units that I require? Next phase. <clears throat> Only a second later, really. I see that the Morskaya Picota 90, which are in this building, are engaging my Challenger 1 Mark III. Fortunately for me, they did not do a lot of damage. Because these guys currently... Um, let's switch this to neutral so I can show you. These have a capability of doing 17 armor penetration. You can see that under AP Power 17. The Challenger 1 Mark III has 20 frontal armor, which means it's going to just shrug off anything that they fire, except for the fact that this unit fires high explosive anti-tank missiles or high explosive anti-tank rockets. Those will always do one damage. So what I can see, and this is um, of course pausing, but I more or less know what kind of anti-tank capability these units have. I know that they are not likely to kill my Challenger. Even if I get it up close, they are not likely to kill it. I can also see that my Challenger 1 Mark III, or my Challenger Marksman, is engaging the infantry and firing off a lot of rounds. So again, checking my troops, I know that the tank can survive this. I know that the tank has enough ammo. I know that the Challenger, Mon, uh, that the Challenger Marksman is starting to run out of ammo. So I need to start planning ahead. That's skill number four. Plan ahead. Always make sure that you have the skills or the units that you're going to need later on. Now I know that my tank is currently being engaged by the helicopters as well as the infantry. So I'm trying to pull it away in order to not have it die to the units that are inside the building. I'm also planning ahead in the sense that, okay, I know that there are only three units of mine that are surviving right now. The infantry that was inside here already died because I offloaded it and it got nailed by a helicopter immediately. So I'm planning ahead and I know that I have two more warriors come in but I'm also going to try and neutralize the infantry as quickly as possible. And that's why I'm bringing in an aerial unit. A Harrier GR7 with a couple of precision bombs, those GBU-12s Paveway 2s. You can see the jet is coming in, and I'm going to use the jet to, again, skill 2, counter. I need these units to kill off the Morskaya Picota that are in the building. Unfortunately, I missed the target. I hit this building instead of where the Morskayas are. The Morskayas are just 8 units now, or 8, let's say, 8 survivors. They still have their anti-tank capability, but they're not that likely to actually kill me. What I also know is that since the zone is red, and it is a reinforcement zone, you can see the big arrow, that I can expect units to come in through this position. So in order to limit my exposure, I'm pulling back these forces to have them not be engaged by too many units at once, so that the Challenger 1 Mark III can engage the unit that is currently the biggest threat, and that's the T-64BM. The Morskayas are way out of range, they do not have the capability to reach out and touch my Challenger 1 Mark III or my Challenger Marksman. My warrior is unable to penetrate the armor on the T-64BM, but by pulling back, so by planning ahead, skill number 4, I can try to limit the exposure of these units. Unfortunately, I'm not doing this fast enough. And you can see that although the Challenger Marksman has a lot of armor, it took a big hit, and it lost almost all of its hit points. Now, you could say it wouldn't be terrible if that happened, because the thing is useless anyway. Because it's out of ammo. Well, yes and no. Um, yes, it cannot fire right now. No, 
it's not a complete thing that you want to waste because it's worth 70 points and I don't get that many of them. So making sure that I have this thing for later would be really useful. Trying to neutralize the threat with my Challenger 1 Mark III not being fast enough and my AA unit dies. So now I know, again going back to my initial skills, both spotting and recognizing and countering, that I don't have any capacity to deal with anti or um, to have any kind of anti-air capability. This helicopter is a problem because my Challenger 1 Mark III cannot really reliably engage it. The Warrior can engage it, but its auto cannon is not great. So what I need to do is plan ahead and bring in another AA unit. You can see that this MH-60L DAP sent over by Brock or Brook is providing anti-air capability, but I can see that the missile icon is there, which means it is out of missiles. So this thing is not going to be that effective at engaging aerial units. So again, spot that and consider what you're going to do to fix the situation. How are you going to counter that? Fifth skill what, that you really need to be able to do is experiment. Wargame is not a static game. There's not an end-all solution. There's not anything that always works, unfortunately. So sometimes you're just going to have to be able to willing to experiment. See what works. See what maybe doesn't work. So stuff like this, an experimental mindset or being able to change stuff in your deck is going to allow you to get more units killed and get more games won. So, to summarize, your five skills that you need to learn. One, spotting and recognizing. Let's say that I'm looking at this thing from my perspective. What do you see? How do you read this situation? What is there that I know? I know that there are two tanks, a T-64 BM and a ZTZ-85-2. I know that there are two types of transports, one ZSL-56 and three SPW-80s. So from that I can deduct that there are more likely to be four units of infantry and possibly more hidden somewhere inside these structures. So how am I going to counter that? Skill number two. <clears throat> what units will I require? I could go infantry on infantry, which isn't bad, but it might not be the most effective way to win. Another way to win would be to go in with mortar fire or to try an airstrike. But I know that there is an anti-air gun over here. You can see that it has those two barrels rising into the sky. That means it's an AA gun. So in a situation like this, I'm going, okay, an airstrike might not be the best idea. So reinforcing the situation with infantry or bring in mortars or any other kind of longer range artillery is really the safest way to counter this. Then, checking my troops, what do I have here, or what do my allies have here, and what do they need? My allies currently might be able to kill this tank, but it seems that the light riflemen are already running out of missiles. They only have 6 out of 18 left, and they seem to be engaging the transports. They don't seem to pay attention to the tank. So the tank is something I cannot counter. They have anti-air, they have SAS, which is multi-role infantry. They have a Super Chinook, which means they can resupply their troops, but I would not be surprised if the Super Chinook is going to get killed off next. The Black Hawk right here is not very effective because it cannot move up due to the AA gun there. So this one is incapable of killing the tank or helping out. So what they seem to be needing right now is anti-tank capability. So I went through spotting and recognizing. Okay, how am I or what am I seeing? How am I going to counter that? And how are my troops doing? What do my allies have in the vicinity? Then, planning ahead, making sure that whatever could be coming down this road is more infantry. How am I going to counter more infantry? Again, tying back into skill number two. And finally, experiment. Maybe I can get away with an airstrike. So what you can do here is just try and ask your allies if they can do an airstrike, which is exactly what Brooke is doing or see what kind of results your allies are getting. So the T-64BM seems to be hit by the missile and it has exploded. 
So I know that the tank problem is solved. And then again, you're going through the entire checklist over and over and over again. Anyway, that's the summary of the five skills. Spot and recognize, counter, check your troops, plan ahead, and be willing to experiment. If you can keep doing those five things, you have a much, much better chance of winning at Wargame. Have any questions? Let me know in the comments. Other than that, good luck on the battlefield.